G'day. Welcome to Craft Beer Crusaders. We all know about the large macro brewers in this country, but what do we really know about the micro brewers? In this show, we, and hopefully you as well, are going to come along on a journey where we explore them and see what we actually expect from a micro brew. At present, I'm waiting for my buddy Mark. He's always late. But at least here at the local, there's plenty of beer. Hey mate. Sorry I'm late. No, all good. What am I drinking? Croucher Anzus IPA. I know what you like with your IPAs. Ooh, nothing... IPA or it's just no way for you, eh? Nothing but the best. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. We could look at going to Red Hill, obviously Mornington, True South. Well, Bright Brewery, we've got to go there. Yeah, Brewer for a day. We could do Brewer for a day. Absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, we'll have to get down to, True, to Two Brothers for their yeah. Thursday night brewery definitely. tour. Definitely. Yeah. That'll be a good one. Uh, I mean, then we can go and see the guys at Mountain Goat, Holgate, uh, Mildura Brewery. There's a whole list to go through, really. So maybe what we should do is work out what we want to do, which brewers we want to go and see, and, uh, yeah, who and we gonna see? Yeah. get on the road and go. Well, that sounds like a plan. Done. It's a, it's a plan. Here's to that. First brewery I decided we should visit was Blackheart Brewery, nestled in the leafy bayside suburbs of Brighton, which Dan had no idea about. Looks like Mark's leading me up the garden path. Again. Where are you taking me? Just come on. What? This is someone's house. No, you'll see. You'll see. This is not a good idea. Come on through. Seriously, mate, where on earth are you taking me? Uh, just you wait. Have a look at that. Okay, now I'm with you. <laughs> How you going? Good, good, good. Mark. Mark, Robin. Robin, this Dan. is Dan. Dan. Nice good to meet you. Wow, good this is better. impressive. Yeah. So what, what's going on down here? Uh, we've just finished the mash in yep. the English parlour today. Ooh. So mash is finished, sugar's into the kettle, just putting the kettle to the boil, and Brad's just cleaning out the spent grain. I think Dan should give him a hand. Hello, Dan. Go on, go on. But I'm wearing, I'm wearing new shoes. Nah, go on, go have a go. Have a no go. Go on. Oh. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Watch your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> he he doesn't he doesn't interview, and I'm doing this. Well, I've been brewing for a long time. Sort of started with extract brewing and so forth. Yep. Did my first mash in 2003. Okay. Uh, took a couple of years to sort of get yep, the equipment right. together and yep, so on. Um, <clears throat> this venture here, uh, we've taken a couple of years to set up and essentially launched the end of last year. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Good beer too. Thank you. Good beer. Um, what, are we, what are we making today? Do you, do so you? we're doing an English Parallel, yep. uh, which is sort of one of eight bottle styles that we do. We've finished the, the mash is finished, uh, sugars have been washed out of the grains into the kettle and Brad there at the moment is cleaning the uh, spent grain out of the mash tun. And uh, j just ha how many litres a year do you think you guys produce, just from a craft beer scale point of view? Oh, that's a good question. I'd have to work it out. At the moment, we're s sort of moving around yeah. and sort of still finding our feet a bit, uh, yeah. so I don't really know. We've got uh, two 500 litre and two 300 litre fermenters, which we can rotate through. Yeah. So I'd say you're probably looking at about fifteen to 20,000 maximum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you've got how many staple beers you guys producing these days now? Uh, we've got eight, eight beers, uh, eight bottled bottled beers. What, what are they? What have we got? So oh. we've got uh, an American pale ale, yep, an American brown ale, uh, hefeweizen, uh, dunkelweizen, <coughs> a Belgian wit beer, English pale ale. Did I say that one? Bohemian pilsner. Yep, which I'm yet to try. Yep, and yep. I think that's about it. Big one I've got. A big question I've got is. 
shed in the backyard. Yeah. Why, why not a, a, a warehouse or a proper brewing facility? Or what was the reason for doing it in the backyard? And I, I assume you had all sorts of trouble trying to get this all set up as well. <clears throat> I did. It essentially, it was to to sort of go out there, the, the financial commitment and so forth of getting a, getting a premises, setting up, uh, all of those sort of things. Really it was if the product is unsuccessful then that's a complete waste of money. Yep. Um, so this was really a, to test the water, get the product out there, small scale, <clears throat> um, without the big financial commitment and then with the potential for moving on if the beer is successful. Is successful. Yeah. So we'll try the American Power Lounge now. See yep. what you think of that. Mm. Being a pale ale, I'm, I'm hoping it's got some, some good hop in it. It's definitely got some good hop in it. Thank you. Look at that colour of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, I have to wait for you to take a sip. <laughs> no, no, you can, you can start now oh, if you no. want. I'm not... It, 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 look, in my house, it's 2468 bog in, don't <laughs> Oh, look at that. That is just delicious. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Making all the right noises. Mm. <laughs> oh. It's, it's, it's got a good hot bite to it. It's not too hoppy. Yeah, it's, that is subtle. That Once is again, amazing. Subtle. Yeah, it's very subtle. That is so good. You're definitely getting the hops, but it's not overpowering, is it? Yeah, no, that's nice. Love that colour. I think we're going to need a very big lunch today. Oh, yes. I think it's got a really nice malt profile to it. It, it does. It sort yeah, of yeah. sits nicely in the background there. Yeah. The balance yeah, on that is perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for your time today, guys. Thank you. It's been uh, great seeing what people can do in their own backyards and uh, Thank you very much. doing amazing beer. Fantastic. Very much, yeah. there you keep, go. keep up the good work. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, we better let it get back to it. All right, good luck. Cheers. All right, go well, make right. some more. Cheers, <laughs> Cheers, guys. With our bellies full of beer and the sun rising high in the sky, we decided it was time to get a feed. And what better place to go than True South Brewery? I hope they do a good steak and chips. How you doing mate? Good, how are you? Daniel. Brian. Nice to meet you, Brian. Nice to see you too. Nice to meet you. So, you're the work experience kid or...? <laughs> yeah, I'm the uh, brewer here. You're the brewer? Yeah, I make all the beer. And okay. The as well. yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And you're 12, 14 years old? 28. Or... I'm a 28 year old man. 28? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jeepers. Beer's good for you. Beer is good for Look you. Look at that. Yeah, my balls younger. haven't quite dropped yet. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So how'd you get started uh, brewing beer? Uh, I started home brewing since I was uh, probably about 17, 18. Just and, don't tell um, the cops. <laughs> and you weren't drinking it at that point, of course. <laughs> no, not of course not. Not at 17, no. Just uh, taste testing, yeah. yeah, which is fine. Um, yeah, I got started home brewing and yeah, went to school for it over in California. UC Davis has a course over there. And you're obviously enjoying it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So where do you get your inspiration from in terms of coming up with new beers? Um, well, yeah, it's uh, one thing's a recipe book, but um, another thing is sort of more just feel, touch, smell. Pretty so, instinctive? Yeah. Whatever and, you um, think will work? I think a lot of brews are sort of made that way as well, even, even big brews. <laughs> brews. Yeah. Even Foster's? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah. We're not going to talk about that. No, we shouldn't. No, no. We shouldn't mention <laughs> so you've obviously got the restaurant here. So um, do you do a lot of matching with the with the beers and the food? Is that yeah. something you're taking into account? Absolutely. Um, I think even a lot of the stuff has has um, beers matched to it, just on the the actual um, yeah the what is it the menu yeah <laughs> yeah. So if someone comes in and they're not quite sure about you know what to match with, the staff here can. Could definitely help them out and tell them Absolutely. exactly what to work with it. Yeah. Aggressive beers. That mm. sounds good. This is an aggressive beer. That's your aggressive one? Yeah. Cocktail IPA, yeah, it'll blow your face off. Yeah. Blow your face blow off. Blow your face off. Hello. Yeah. That sounds good. Mm. Let's do some samples. What are you uh 
What are you going to select for us? So let's start with the Angry Argy. Uh, a nice, easy drinking, very aromatic beer. The man child then proceeded to take us through the True South beer experience. Anything to get the image of Brian's balls dropping out of our minds. Mm. Did it work? Thankfully, yes. And the beer was pretty good too. Well, that is absolutely amazing. Cheers. It is, isn't enjoy it? it? It is. Well, um, so you guys want to come through and um, I've got to do a gravity on the pale ale, so do you want to go come check out the brew? Yeah, why not? That yeah, sounds right. good. Why not? There we go. Your type of brewing is very traditional, isn't it? What you, what you brew, you sort of stick to... Very, yeah. The, um, the beer tradition, I guess. Yep, yeah, it's... Um, I brew to the, the German purity law, so I don't add anything, um, you know, to to help stabilize the beer, like preservatives or fines or anything. So yeah. everything's all natural, it's all malt. So there's no adjuncts added, like rice or corn. Or so what temperature are you trying to get that to? to well, these hydrometers, they're calibrated yeah. between 20 and 20.9. Yep. Yeah, so I've got an ice bath here just to cool it down. It can sometimes be a bit fiddly. So what's the next step from here? What do you, what do we do? What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, so I grab um, this one. There's four hydrometers that yep. I've got. Just all um, calibrated to different measurements. And yeah, basically we're checking the sugar content. So, um, checking your, gra your yeah, gravity the, basically. Yeah. At the start of the boil, the, there'll be a sugar content, and as you boil, then um, you know it evaporates, so Drop, it'll get sweeter. Yeah. 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 Enough about the beer brewing techniques. When do we get to eat? The human headline's hungry, is he? I sure am. Cue the food montage, please. These carrots look good enough to make me become a vegetarian. <laughs> look at that. That's gorgeous. So but all of it looks amazing. It does actually. Thank I'm you. I'm hanging out for the dessert with the little I'm macaroon hanging out up there. Pork belly. Yes, I know. You were drawing before. But let's let's, let's begin. start with the carrots and uh, the beer to go with that is the summer. Is it summer ale? Summer ale. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So let's all just uh, dig the, in. We just dig the, in. the carrots have been pickled. The summer ale is it takes the bite away, yeah. but keeps the flavour of the food in there. Mm. The nuts also adds a lot of um, flavour with yeah. the coriander seeds, and bit of caramel, well, yeah. I got, I got, and then the smokiness. Jeez, it beats my roast carrots every day of the week. Now what's this one? This is the... This is a choripan. <laughs> it's, a, it's basically a chorizo that we don't put it in a casing. We make it with sausage meat, minced pork, yep. and also oh. smoked ham hocks. I'll uh, cut them. Cut and the bums is, uh, is cornbread. Yep. And so they, are they locally sourced? They're obviously locally yes. sourced as well. Yes. For yeah, I'm not meats. waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> you can go for it. Now the beer with that one is the... This one is a Pilsner. Pilsner. You will see how well they complement. It's fantastic. So the funny thing is, if you smell the aroma of both of them separately, they you, you look at it and think, okay, that's not going to match. But, mm. Well, that cured me of my vegetarianism. <laughs> that is beautiful chorizo. This is everybody's favourite in here. Oh, wow. The Sounds next good. one is the um, twice a smoked and crumb pork belly. This, once again, is a... That is some serious pork belly. Gibson pork belly, again. You know what? Yeah. I hate to do this in front of a chef. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Use fingers. Just go now, for it. Now, before you do, you need to, the beer we've got, this and is the, the RG. This one is the RG. This yep. is the RG. Yeah, that is. I can see how this is going to work together. It's a yeah. very, very Are you ready easy for this to crunch? beer. Yeah. Go. I'm going to pinch this bit right here. It's great to see people that enjoy food. It just melted. Oh my goodness. 
I'm going to need a moment. It falls apart in your mouth, though. Oh. Alright, so with this one we've got the you red the truck. Red truck? Yep. It's the red truck. One of my favourite beers. So this one's the red truck with the the lamb. Get some pomegranates in there as well. So, some people they see this dish as a wintery dish. As it's not wintery at all. Mm. You know, it's an all year round dish. Mm. And now we are coming you into the... You can taste the, the, the dark beer as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. You really taste it in there. Oh, it and that just... warmth from that dark beer comes through with yeah. the um, the red truck as well. That's... Oh. To finish an incredible feast, Maro presented us with the piece de resistance chocolate trifle, which included cake, mousse, jelly, candied almonds, and seasonal fruit. Have we got room for dessert with all the beer we've been drinking? There's always room for jello. Thank you very much for taking us through those. That was incredible. Oh, please. Beautiful. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. The pressure. Yeah. Do you know what I think? Yeah. I think matching beers with foods is going to be the next big thing in restaurants. Oh, I think you're spot on. Because what they're doing here at True South, this is fantastic. Amazing. Absolutely, absolutely yeah, brilliant. Absolutely amazing. So uh, what do we do? We finish this off now and we'll head off to uh, Two Brothers. Sounds like a plan. Cheers. The last thing you'd expect to find in an outer suburban industrial estate in Melbourne is a brew house pub thriving in the local economy. Do they make good beer though? <laughs> well, they've won quite a few awards at the AIBA in recent years, so I'd say they do. In that case, let there be beer. We killed some time waiting for the brewery tour with a few beers and some pizza. All the while, Dan was preparing for his moment in the spotlight on the tour. Alright, come on. Come on. Alright, here we go. Get some boots. Oh, Get some boots. Look at the shoes. Look at the shoes. Oh. Oh, jeepers. Okay. Oh. Jeepers. Jeez, you're slow. Oh. Oh. Come on. Oh. It's not oh, that that's hard. uncomfortable. Look at you. What's yours? I'm going to be. I'm beer free. All right, come down, gather around. So you're driving. Come around a bit. I'm driving. This time, that's the way. Oh, smell those hops. <laughs> Got quite a crowd here. <laughs> um, they hops. Ooh, yeah. Welcome uh, to Two Brothers, guys, and thanks for uh, joining the brewery tour. Uh, are there any home brewers in the audience? One, two, two. One behind two, you as one well. Behind. One behind. One behind. Okay, three. Yeah. That's a, a good representation. I so, suggest you don't put olives in your beer. <laughs> no, nah, we'll, I'll leave that, leave that for you. <laughs> um, when we make beer, uh, beer is a two-step process, and when we make beer, we do two things. The first thing we do is extract sugar from malt and the second thing we do is um, uh, provide that sugar to the yeast so that the yeast can convert the sugar into alcohol so in a really simple way we, we extract sugar and then the yeast will convert that to alcohol so we get the sugar from grain and you can see there's various different types of grain here um, there's oats there's barley there's wheat and sometimes we use rice in one of our beers as well, which we don't have here. And you'll also notice that there are different colours of grain. And the colouring comes from the malting process. So, so a dark grain will have been roasted at a high temperature. Um, and the colouring allows us to impart different flavours and colours into the beer. So if you get a dark beer, it's probably made with something dark like a chocolate malt. So when we make the beer, we start off with about 500 kilograms of grain. Um, the first thing we do is load that into a mill and the mill cracks it open like that and you can kind of see the white, um, the white flowery stuff in the middle. That's basically starch. So our job as brewers is, one of them is to convert that starch into sugar. We do that by mixing this ground malt with water, about three parts water to one part malt and holding that at a a secret temperature, most people use 66 degrees, 
And at that temperature, there are enzymes which are naturally packaged in the malt, which convert the starch into sugar. Starch is kind of like a long spaghetti chain of sugar molecules stuck together. And the starch just chops it up, uh, the, the, the um, enzyme chops it up into uh, simple sugars. So that takes about an hour for this soupy porridge of ground malt and water to become quite sweet and sugar rich. The next thing we need to do is strain off the, the liquid, the, the sugar water off the, off the husk, um, and that's called loutering. We do that in the vessel on the right hand side. It's like a big sieve, and the sieve traps the solids. This is where things started to get a little strange. Yes, kiddies, remember, don't drink and present a TV show at the same time. This is what happens. And the liquid runs through the bottom. <laughs> we run the liquid across to the left-hand side. <laughs> and the liquid running across is now called Wurt, W-O-R-T. So that's your sugar water. On the left-hand side, we have a kettle. It doesn't get any wort than that. That's the way. And the kettle gradually fills with wort. Once it gets to the top, oh, it's an embarrassment. we turn on the steam and the steam starts to boil the wort. <laughs> oh. as, the, as the wort boils... I don't know where we're going with this, but let's just keep going. Some nasty smelling volatiles evaporate off the top of the wort. <laughs> and then we throw in hops. Now I've got some oh. hops here. You can throw the hops in. Hops are a kind of, you can think of them like a herb. Um, I think good. their closest plant relative is actually cannabis. The resins in hops um, won't get you high, but they actually add bitterness to the beer, and that's the main reason that we add them. So um, you're, you learnt your craft over in America? We, yeah? That's kind of that's where, we got, I've heard that's where anyway. we got started. Dave and I um, used to live in the States. Yep. Uh, Dave lived in the Bronx and uh, I used to live in Seattle and um, we became aware of craft beer when we were living there, working other jobs. Yep. And when we came back uh, in the mid 90s, um, we sort of, first of all, we missed those products because be. they weren't available. And then we thought, uh, well, maybe we can do something. So, to Start fight the that. fight, yeah. To, so to when did you get started? When did you start Two Brothers? Um, so we committed to building a brewery in about 95, and we made our first beer at the end of 2007. <laughs> so <laughs> if that gives you an idea. Wow. Yeah, a so fair, fair bit of planning in the, there. The equipment purchase in the... Yeah, not the, cheap. That was a couple of years before the yeah. first beer. Came out. So that was a very long fermentation process That's, on that one. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 And was it a brew pub, I guess, like it is now, the moment you opened, or did that come later? Or? It's always been in this configuration. Yep. Um, we've sort of fine-tuned things over time, uh, and we'll continue to do, we sort of do minor improvements where we can identify them. But it's always been a, we've always had a tavern with the, with the brewery itself. Yep. Oh, oh. Look at that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, no Thank you very Thanks much. Thank you for your awesome. nice you. we'll, um, I'll be back. I'll be back. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. Mate, how good was that? Oh, that's fantastic. That is unbelievable. I told you it was a good place. Here we go. After you, sir. Thank you very much. Let's go. All right. Hey. Yeah. On to the next one. Where are we going now? I don't have a clue. Mornington. Morabin. We're going to Morabin. No, Mornington. We're going to Mornington. Join us next time as we journey to the Mornington Peninsula and see what liquid gold we strike upon. It's sure to be a keg of fun and laughs.